going to be looking at Psalm 119 this morning, beginning in verse 17. And if I if I summed up what I think the psalmist might be saying in this stanza in, in kind of a different way, he's saying, God, I need you. I said that uh, I found out two things. One, I need people. Uh, if you're one that needs people, raise your hand where you are. But then the psalmist also says, God, I need you and I need to hear from you. I need to hear you speak. I need to hear your voice above all the chatter and the clatter of everything that's going around me. Uh, God, the noise is just coming in, but God, I need to hear your voice over all of that. He's saying in verse 17, he says, Lord, deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. God, deal bountifully with me. Uh, be gracious to me. God, deal with me in favor so that I might live and keep your word. Now, I'm not sure that he's literally referring to physical life. I think he's talking about more than just physical life because we can live but merely exist. And he's saying, God, deal bountifully with me so that I might live, that I might have the fullness of life. And God, that I might keep your word. Above everything, he wants to honor God by being obedient and following his word. Not only in his rules, not only in God's commands, but in all of God's precepts and the life-giving flow of the Word of God. It's amazing to me the power the Word of God has, that it can give life, it, um, spiritual life. It nourishes us. It feeds the Spirit. Uh, the difference between uh, the believer and the non-believer, one of the differences, is that the non-believer cannot receive that life-giving power of the Word of God. Why? Because Paul says a natural man does not understand the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. And that would apply the Word of God as well. And so the natural man doesn't see the Word of God as essential. I was thinking about the shutdowns, and it seems as though they want to shut churches down. Um, well, to the natural man, that seems as though it's not a, an essential item. But to those who us, of us who are believers, where we center our lives, we center our fellowship, we center our community around the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, the Word of God is absolutely essential. Can I get an amen to that? And so for the natural man... The one who's not born again, they, they see it as religious fervor. It's not. The Word of God is life-giving. And to the believer, it is his lifeline with the Holy Spirit. He says in verse 18, Open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of your law. God, open my eyes today as I read your Word. God, that, that I might receive wondrous things from your word. Isn't it amazing how many times we may read a familiar passage of scripture or a familiar verse, and all of a sudden the Lord opens up to us greater illumination to that word. It's not that he gives us new revelation. The revelation has already been given in the word, but he illuminates the word of God to us, the wonderful things, the wondrous things in the word of God. Verse 19, I am a sojourner on the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. There's the old song, I am a pilgrim, Lord and a stranger, just wandering through this wearisome land. But I've got a home in that yonder city, not made with hands nor made with gold. Peter said in his letter that, that we are like grass. It's here today, but it's gone tomorrow. It withers. We are pilgrims in this land. This, this place is not our home. 
it's our dwelling at this time, but we're just passing through. And, and one of the reasons that this passing through seems to be uncomfortable and the older we get, the more we have a longing for the next is because we realize and recognize this is not our eternal state. This is not the place that we belong for all of eternity. It's in his presence forever and ever. So we're just sojourners passing through this land. My soul is consumed with longing for your rules at all times. God, it consumes me because I long to know more of you through your word and the revelation of who you are, God, and who I am in light and in relationship with you. God, my soul is consumed. It reminds me of what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. He says, Blessed are those who do thirst and hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We have a longing to know God and to know God's word. In verse 21, he says, You rebuke the insolent, accursed ones who wander from your commandments. God, you rebuke them. Those that wander from your commandments or wander from your word. I was reminded as I read that verse of what Paul wrote to Timothy, that young pastor, Timothy, in Paul's very last letter that he wrote before he was going to be martyred, before he was going to be killed. He's writing his last testament to Timothy, his son in the faith, and he says this in chapter 3, verse 16. He says, all scripture is breathed out by God. All scripture is inspired by God. It's, it's not man's devices. It's not man's idea. And man was carried along by the Holy Spirit as he was inspired to write God's word. And he says, all scripture is God breathed. And it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. So here Paul really is encouraging Timothy. Timothy, you stay in the scriptures because they're inspired by God. Timothy, and they're useful in your life. They're, they're useful for correction, redirection in life, for, for training in the Christian life. They're, they're useful for reproof, to rebuke Timothy. And Timothy, as you're preaching the Word of God, recognize and realize that it is God's Word that's going out. And the Holy Spirit uses that to teach people, to correct His, to rebuke those, uh, to bring training in righteousness. And so here the psalmist, back to Psalm 119, says, God, you rebuke the insolent. And it's with the Word of God that he rebukes them. Take away from me scorn and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Even though all of these people are coming against me, even though princes are trying to, 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 um, to come against me and bring me down, God, in the midst of that, I'm going to meditate on your precepts. Your precepts are what are going to occupy my mind and my time. What's coming against you today? Is that going to occupy your time and your mind or are the precepts and the truths of the Word of God? Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. Your testimonies are my delight. They are your counselors. I said early that I, when I began that I needed two things. I needed the body need relationship and fellowship with the body and I also need the Lord there's an old hymn that I remember my dad used to sing every morning I need thee every hour most gracious Lord go to like thine and peace of 
I need you, oh I need you, every hour I need you, oh bless me now my Savior, I come I need the every hour Stay thou by me Temptations lose their power When thou art not I need the oh I need I come I come to thee. Last verse, I need thee every hour. Most holy one, sing it with me. I need thee every hour. Most holy one. Oh, make me thine end. Thou blessed Son, I need Thee, oh, I need Thee, every hour I need Thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come. I come to Father, we pray that you would meet the body this morning, God, by the Holy Spirit as only you can meet them. God, I pray that you'd meet every need. Father, I pray for your blessings, God. I pray the abundance of the joy of knowing you and walking with you. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Well, I do pray God's blessings on you today. Uh, may his face shine upon you. Uh, may you be filled with his grace. May the Lord give you an opportunity to share Christ's love with somebody who doesn't know him today. Have a great day.